in the previous episode of my 3 ds Tutorials. And now, in today's tutorial... Hello everyone to a new exciting video on this channel. Uh, so this is actually going to be a little of a shorter video, so this is going to be pretty fast. Uh, because I'm actually preparing a new series uh, in a parallel with this video, right? So uh, I'm also filming after this uh, the first part of the uh, new series. And don't worry, it's not gonna be like the train series, so it's not gonna be like 30 parts or whatever. I hope to do it in uh, 7 parts. Probably it's going to be extended to maximum 10 parts, but no more than that. And it's actually going to be a character creation tutorial. Um, so I really hope you're excited for that. I'm going to actually explain a little more tomorrow in a bonus video about what we'll do and how things will actually work out. But I want you to know that that's coming. So this is actually not going to be um, that big of a, of a tutorial like I usually do, right? But here's the deal. This is still going to be pretty cool. But before we actually start to do that, I want to do two things. First of all, thank you so much for uh, the last episode, the Haikyuu... Uh, actually, not episode. I really think I'm in, a, in an anime right now, don't I? Um, uh, for the last tutorial, for the last video, because the response from you guys was absolutely amazing. The Haikyuu tutorial was actually number one in my views. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, so I really hope you liked that and you will like this one and what's coming next because I think it's pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and I do hope that you will actually take in consideration to subscribe to the channel because it's free. I think a lot of great content is going to show up and I hope that you will actually tell me if you did download the free procedural fence, which again is in the description of this video right here or in the last video or in basically every video. Uh, and it's free, it's a procedural fence that you can use and if you don't remember uh, how that was, I'm going to actually put right now a link to that video. I hope it's up here on the on the video. Um, and uh, yeah, I do hope you actually like that and I do hope you actually will use it. Uh, so with this being said, please again subscribe because apparently 60% of the people watching are not actually subscribed to the channel. So... What do we do about that? Come on. I still want to do the 500 subscribers, so please help me out on that one. And uh, for those that are subscribed, thank you so, so much. And please, if you would like, leave a like on this video, leave a comment on this video. Honestly, just I want to know how you guys think, uh, what you guys think about the series and how things are going. Uh, and what else would you like to see on this channel and, you know, in the later videos in general. Uh, and also, I am really interested in, uh, well, your experience with this channel, really. If this helped you at all, if you learned anything, I'm actually really curious on that. Uh, and where I could actually do better, because I know there are a lot of things I have to improve, and I'm trying to do so. And also, please, uh, if you want, share this video for others to actually see, and actually, you know, uh, try to tighten that... Uh, that gap between the unsubscribe people that watch and the subscribe people that watch because right now you guys are not as many so with this being said let's actually get into the video here we are again into a new video so um last time we learned how to <clears throat> use shape keys right well today i'm actually going to show you a cool material for stylized works right again this is not going to be that long of a video but I think it's a very important video and the most important part of this is everything will happen in EV. So for those people that actually don't have, you know, super strong computers or whatever, which trust me, I do totally understand you. EV is the savior and you want to kind of do everything in there, right? So this is actually for all of you guys, right? Here's the deal. First, we will delete everything and uh, we will just bring out Suzanne. And if you don't know who Suzanne is, that's the uh, monkey of uh, Blender. So this is basically the um, mascot that Blender has. Um, Suzanne. You can actually see the name over there. Let's actually shade it smooth. No, no. Shade it perfectly fine. Let's actually give it a subdivision surface. Look how beautiful that looks. 
And uh, let's actually go right into the shading tab, right? So let me close this windows real fast. And let's create a new material, which we're going to call soon to Zen. And I'm going to actually teach you two tricks in this video. I did not intend to do that, but I actually remember I can, I can do whatever I want. So why not? Um, first things first. Because we are working in Eevee, Eevee has actually something um, that Cycles doesn't. Which is the inability to have ray tracing. And a lot of you probably are saying, how is that a good thing? Well, you don't always have to use ray tracing. So for those that don't know what ray tracing is, ray tracing is basically the ability to calculate, um, well, light, right? So basically this is what Cycles uh, this is why Cycles actually is so cool and why a lot of people are considering, you know, either doing that, either you can download engines like Octane for Blender or um, you can work in Unreal. They do offer uh, ray tracing uh, and that helps a lot with really realistic shots or at least with like super fancy stuff because you don't have to play so much with the light anymore. The light will basically already be computed by... Uh, that engine and then you can tweak it here and there for some stuff but basically it's already really really good right and i did show you kind of the difference between them so between ev and um cycles actually let me just show you one more time because again there might be might be a lot of people that uh you know were not here the first time so i'm going to just take a super basic light Make it like 1000 just to make sure that uh, we see it. Go into render view. And this is what we will see with Eevee. And as you can see, Eevee does actually affect, you know, the, the body with a light and stuff. Let's actually get ambient occlusion, bloom, reflections and stuff. Right now, it's not really going to affect us too much. But this is how it looks with Eevee, right? And this is what happens when Cycles comes in. And you'll say that there's not much of a difference, which I will say you're kind of right, but that's because it's not a very interesting or, you know, complex scene. However, you can see a little bit that Cycles does do a better job at doing the shading, uh, the, the things like the shadows are smoother, the lighting itself is actually having a better fall off. So when you switch to Eevee, you can actually see it very well, kind of, in at the ear. See all these sh little shadows around here? Well, Eevee doesn't really do a great job with that, right? Because, again, it doesn't have ray tracing. It doesn't know how to do it. So that's, you know, perfectly fine. But there might be people that want to use Eevee. Um, and there are a couple of reasons. Not just if you have a, a weaker computer. Which, yes, it is one of the main things, because Eevee is actually easier on your computer. But also, Eevee is basically a real-time render. So as you can see, Eevee, uh, whatever adjustments I make, it does it instantly. While with Cycles, if you're moving to Cycles, if you see it up there in the corner, actually... It doesn't really do it instantly, right? You have to wait a little bit for it to re-render what you see. To basically render the preview for you to see. It's a little bit more complex, but basically that's the, the point. Cycles takes way longer to render and way longer to also work with. Uh, so, sorry, I just got an update. Um, <clears throat> with Eevee being here, let's actually delete the light because now we don't need it let's go into material mode go back to shading with ev being selected let's actually come back to the shading node and select the shader to rgb node right here and this node you actually won't find in cycles because really there are not really too many reasons actually the closest node in cycles for this is the tune bstf and if you remember we did use it in the high q version but actually it's not looking perfectly the same so basically if you want to make something look very cartoonish i rather recommend you use eevee there are a few reasons for it actually first things first you don't need a realistic lighting because you're basically creating a cartoon so there's not really a reason to use ray tracing which takes longer to render it's actually you know harder to work with because of the you know whole rendering the preview and all 
it's a little easier to work in EV, and you also have the shaded YGB weekend, which can do some pretty neat stuff, right? So actually, uh, let's disconnect that and put a color ramp in here, right? Put a color ramp here, set it to constant, and let's see what we see with it. Well, nothing really, because we need to update this. Well, when we do see something though, look how cool that is. We see shading that is actually super cartoonish like, I would say. Um, and let me just uh, come here. And basically, when you go to render, you can see that that cartoonish style actually is affected in the render mode by our light, which I don't know about you, but to me, that is pretty cool. And actually, this can give you a pretty cool hint to some stylized, um, you know, scenes we can create with this. But we can actually do a little more than just have this cool stuff, right? Let's actually get another color ramp in. And this time, I'm going to actually give some color to this, right? So let's actually uh, make it like this purplish color. And then... Actually, let me delete this, create another one, and make it lighter. And another one... Okay, and make this one actually a little darker. Alright, so we have three shades of purple here, right? But what's the deal with it? Actually, if we put this in and then we just look at it, it doesn't look too good. Actually, most of the detail is out. And in the render mode, yes, it does look actually pretty interesting. But again, the moment you move the light is going to kind of lose the detail depending on where the light is. However, though, you don't have to use that alone. Actually, let me stay in the render view for this. Because we have this color ramp still, and this color ramp will basically control well the shadow is. So actually, if you can see, we do have a mask. Remember how I explained you before? Masks, you have to think about it as values from 0 to 1, right? But in colors, 0 and 1 are represented by black, which is 0, and white, which is 1. Everything in between, or light gray, or, you know, darker gray, it's a value between 0 and 1, right? And basically, what you want to do is play with that, right? Because in this case, for example, we will use the black and white value here as a mask for our uh, colors here. So the way to do that is actually get a mixed color node like this, put it in, use this as a factorial because again, this is the node you're going to, to help yourself with. Connect this to... I well, let's connect it to A first. And this is how it's going to look right now, right? Uh, actually, I want this to be rather. And now, if you use this color, you can get something like this, which already is super cool, right? Because that's actually a super nice effect. And of course, you can, um, you know, play around with the colors. Uh, see, you know, if you can do better stuff. So, as you can see, if you minimize this light purple, uh, you will actually be able to get the other shades uh, in there as well. And that looks pretty interesting already, right? But we can actually do an even better thing, right? Because again, this value, the white value here, is all the black value that we get from here. So, if you understand how this will look, you understand what this value here does. But what I would like to do is actually create um, a little um, stroke method like we did back, you know, when you draw by hand, you basically will draw some lines. And actually there are some scenes in some anime, I'm going to put them up here. Uh, and this is a method I learned a long time ago with a stroke. Uh, from a guy on YouTube, I'm gonna try to find his channel and uh, shout him out a little bit because he that video was really really cool to me. I knew about the shader to RGB, but that stroke matter to me that was really really interesting. Um, so basically, what you want to do is get a wave texture. And again, if you watch the last episode with the high Q cre recreation of a scene, 
you do exactly know how this wave texture works. And uh, let's actually copy this color ramp. You have to keep the color uh, black and white for this one. And let's see how this actually looks. And this looks, well, pretty okay. And let me actually get this to make these lines pretty thin. Alright, so after inputting the wave texture, and after you decided how much you want these uh, lines, like how thick and stuff, what you actually have to do is, instead of having the texture coordinate, you know, give a generated value, you have to set it from window. And I'm going to show you why in just a second. But first, oh, by the way, my value here is like 85.6. Let's actually make it 85. It's not going to make a big difference anyway. So that's pretty cool. And now we can take this value and put it in the A color. And this will actually not work perfectly fine. And that is because I uh, did it wrong. I should have reversed these two colors. So this had to be to A and this one had to be to B. The reason you can actually see right here. Uh, A will basically be all the black value because I did reverse these two. So the black value is now up here. And whatever the window will be, will be put basically over uh, the back here, right? And I don't really like how this looks, right? Like this to me looks pretty weird because that's not how drawing works. So what you want to do is set this color from uh, this mix color from mix to multiply. And now this will work wonderfully with your scene. This, uh, these strokes are basically going to be over your, um, your already created color, right? So having this, you can actually also play, of course, with the angle at which you do your strokes. Because usually the strokes are going to be something like this. And then you can play with the thickness of the strokes. Or, um, of course, you can also play with uh, how much of the strokes should be. You know? So, basically the strokes are going to create the shadow. And of course, what's cool about it is that they actually will be affected by our light. Right, so that's wonderful. Because again, that's how animators used this. Uh, actually, I'm going to give you a few examples of how that looks. And uh, some stylized works that have been created with this shade, uh, shader to RGB modifier. And uh, now having this, let's actually do one more thing. And then I'm going to try to recreate this on our high cube ball that we did in the last uh, tutorial. But first, before we do that, I want to show you one more thing. Uh, let me actually create something that you probably are not used with, uh, uh, to use to if you never used it. And that is the grease pencil. And uh, if you did not hear about the grease pencil in Blender, uh, you really should... Um, Try to look a little bit into it because it's an amazing tool. Actually, if you know the movie Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which is an absolutely amazing movie from last year, um, that movie did use the Grease Pencil tool in it movie in its movies, and I think uh, they explained it. It was for like the facial uh, expressions created by the lines, and the reason for it, it's because here's how Grease Pencil works, right? You can do two D animations with it, by the way. And you can actually, let me get you a Grease Pencil Suzanne, which looks like this. This is something you can create with Grease Pencil. This is the 3D Suzanne. This is a 2D Suzanne. And yes, you can see it very well. That's a 2D shape and it looks 3D and all, but it's actually not there. It's more or less like a plane, even though geometry wise, it is not even like a plane it's a little hard to explain this but basically you can create 2d animations with suzanne and let me tell you you can create some impressive 2d animations again check out pia Pika's, uh channel because it does explain way more about the grease pencil than i do uh but here's a way you can actually use grease pencil in even your 3d works in general right and not to draw you don't need to know how to draw for this one just to create a stroke right with the stroke line here, or with the stroke, actually not stroke line, selected, 
Now you can go to modifiers and you will actually see a sort, a uh, different sort of settings for the modifiers now, right? So this is the modifiers you have available for the grid pencil. And now um, I'm not a professional when it comes to grease pencil. I know a very little part of it, but even with the little knowledge I have on this, I still think it's an amazing tool, right? The first thing you can do is uh, select the line art. And here you can see it's a pretty scary modifier because it has a lot of options and like a lot of, uh, you know, things you can do with it. And it can seem pretty intimidating. However, it's actually super easy to use. So the first thing is you can select the source type. And I don't want to have a collection here. I want just an object. And now I can take the pipette and actually put it on Suzanne. Then a layer. You can select colors or lines. It doesn't really matter that much. Usually you should use colors though. That's the one I use anyway. And then uh, choose a color of the uh, outline and nothing happens. And there's a reason for it. The reason is the line art doesn't really know how to work because it doesn't know how to see itself. So basically, look at this. When you have the camera behind, nothing happens. However, when you put the camera be, uh, before Suzanne, the line art basically will interact uh, with the camera, right? So the, the line art actually is controlled by the view of the camera, which is extremely interesting and extremely useful because you can select, you can do a lot of things with this. But uh, yeah, as you can see, this is actually a pretty cool, a pretty cool thing. And this is basically what you get. And yeah, yes, you can animate this. And uh, again, this is pretty crazy. You have a 2D object, which is a stroke, uh, basically reacting to your 3D asset here. I think that's, uh, that's pretty amazing. And that's a lot more things you can do with it, by the way. So you can go to uh edge types and you can uh you know play with the crease and stuff usually honestly that um a lot more uh you know about what you want to do so you can change this to sh uh, to the silhouette to the individual silhouette but again in this case it doesn't really matter uh usually the contour is the one you kind of want um what else can you do Again, I didn't play with most of these, right? So hopefully you'll understand that. Um, the thing that I did the most, right? Besides that is, however, um, playing around with more modifiers. So basically besides that, uh, you can play with the opacity of your actual outline. And the line thickness itself, right? So you can make it a little more obvious or less obvious, depending on what style you want or what you want to do, right? Let's set this back to 25. And actually, you can introduce the dot dash. And that actually will give a pretty cool effect, which is a little bit of a segmented um, kind of um, material-ish. Uh, and then you can have the gap here. So if you put it 0 0.5, it's actually a little bit uh, weird because as you can see, some of them will be different. Uh, and yeah, of course, you can play around with this as much as you want. Let's give this to one. Uh, then you can play with a dash. Usually I do always increase this a little bit so that these um, little lines don't actually uh, are, are not actually that um you know uh dense because this actually looks a little better and uh yeah you can play again with uh with a lot of this and you have a lot of options here as well for the influence of it uh, which again i don't really touch usually because i don't really care then you can also play with its offset if you're not liking how it looks in the original version uh which i'm okay with and then you can do one more thing um which is put some, where is it, noise right here. And this looks horrible right now because it's a very, very strong noise, right? Like the strength of it, actually the strength, as you can see, kind of affects the opacity that uh, that will give. 
the position is the one you want. So with zero position, you have it's it's almost like not having noise at all. And then you can just play around and go either super crazy with it, either keep it to a normal degree, I would say. But then again, this will create these little parts right here. And I think, uh, actually, I don't think I know this is because of our um, gap here, right? So because of the gap and because of Suzanne, really, because you, as you can see, the eyes uh, have an outline while the exterior of the eyes actually have another outline. It's going to look pretty different. And you have to play around with the values for that to actually work however you want. You can, of course, play with a noise scale as well to actually make it work more or less in your favor. The noise offset also is a pretty cool stuff because, again, you can play around with it, maybe even animate it if you want. And, of course, you have a seed, which helps you to have different versions of the same thing to see which one you like more. Um... The randomize is also pretty cool. You can randomize by keyframes or by steps, uh, which, again, can be pretty, pretty nice. Okay, so we're back in the um, animation for the high Q scene. And actually, let me get this from Cycles to Eevee. And um, really, what we have to do, right, is first things first, get... So this is the Toon BSDF. Actually, we need to get this out and get a principal BSDF in. Which will actually, I think I could have done that with uh Now that I say to think about it, I think we could have done the exact same thing, but with that. With the tomb BSDF, because it's still a shader. It doesn't matter anyway. What does matter is with this shader, we can get a color ramp, which you already know what to do with it. Set it to constant, and basically let's see what this this sees, right? And this is what we see, right? Nothing too crazy. It's just the shadow, let's call it, right? Good. Now, of course, we can get another. Actually, let me just duplicate this color ramp. And this color ramp here will actually, you know, be the one that drives the color. However, there is one problem that we will have with this, and that is, I don't really want it to be this way, all right? Because if I get the color from this and this, it will not keep our, you know, um, lines and our wave textures and stuff here. So we actually have to find a way to integrate everything we created over here, which I am actually going to take and put this down here. And uh, yeah, we basically have to take this and uh, kind of recreate it. Um, and uh, I didn't see if it uh, still kept all the black lines and stuff. So to do that, I think we can actually, let me see. Let's get, let's get a mix color node. And actually get this color ramp into the factorial and see what we have. And that's actually not bad. It's more or less what we needed to see, right? Because we need to see the color, which we do see. And then there's going to be the reverse of it, which doesn't really see the color. And then we will also need to see a wave texture. You know, with the, the control T for the texture coordinate and the mapping. And then another color ramp factorial, which, yes, I will still set to constant uh, right here. Let me actually take this down. Let me actually put this to window and scale this up to like a 50, maybe. Uh, incline this maybe to a 4 to 5 degree angle. Kind of like that. And just take this down to like 30 to actually see the lines kind of clear. And now I can actually take this and put it right into the A and let's see what we get. And this doesn't look too good. First of all, it's set to mix. So actually let's set it to multiply and see what we get. And that is not what we want. By any means, that's not what we, what we need. 
and let's do it now and now it's exactly what we need so select so let's put the color into the a value of the mix shader uh, the mix color node uh put the wave texture into the black color and uh, basically the shadow will be put wherever the black color from this uh point uh, the where the white color sorry is from this uh from this color ramp so that means we can actually play around with it and if we reverse these two colors let me actually put this in you will actually see the shadows all over the place and this looks so cool and uh, now i'm kind of mad i didn't do the animation with this actually maybe i will um let me actually set the animation back to its original version and let me save this and this is how this will basically have looked if animated this way and i think it's way cooler this way it's absolutely closer to the anime than uh than my original more realistic version was which uh is pretty crazy to begin with and uh the real question is can we do the same thing to the air well yes question mark because here's the deal the um, the uh uh what's it called the air here has a small issue when it comes to to that so basically let's take a shader to rgb and actually put it in and this is the problem that uh, i don't know if you do see what the problem is but it's pretty obvious um because the principal bsdf actually goes to a shader which goes to an rgb node uh what we basically happen to to have now is the alpha information is taken also as a as a color so really because of that reason we don't really have um uh we don't really have transparency anymore right so right now even if you go to the blend mode here in the material settings and you try to change to different styles of uh, you know alpha blending and stuff this will actually not work for us because it's just not getting the information uh so actually let me we can of course still try to do it color ramp i actually didn't try this i'm, I'm quite curious if it's going to work all right so I can of course take this down but yeah this one is not gonna be you know that crazy so it can be something like this three hours later and there it is actually i did uh find a way to actually use that so i'm actually making a short out of this one because that's actually pretty cool so uh actually what i had to do is by using the same invert color now that we used for the alpha again if you did not see the high key video i do totally recommend it but basically i just created this mask for the air with a gradient node and then we basically got it all into this one right here which uses both the gradient and the noise texture in a combination and then i just put it to constant to get this right and this was driving my alpha actually the inverse of this was driving my alpha which basically does the same here basically right so we have it here in the mix color node with a multiply and all actually i think i if i set it to mix i think it should work still and then basically this value will come in and drive our mix shader and the shader doesn't have to do a lot, right? The shader only has to drive a transparent node, which tells basically our body where to be transparent. And this is why this works, because that's basically... Uh, so this is what uh, is going to have, you know, black here and white here. And actually this mix node will reverse this. And actually I can take this out and just put the inverse in, and it's still going to work perfectly well, because this will tell the transparency wherever it's white, you will be totally transparent wherever you're black you can still be totally visible and now i just put this in and in the first value right here i will actually have this mix 
here, which is the mix we already created like this. Uh, and you have to understand that this doesn't matter up here. Okay, this doesn't exist. All that exists are the shadows here. And uh, this works perfectly fine. I'm super happy with the result. And actually, we can also create maybe like an a little outline for the air. But basically, let me actually make this look uh, like this. Uh, actually, this is how this will look. If you ask me, this looks way closer to the anime and it looks absolutely brilliant. And yeah, that is uh, kind of it for this video. Um, and I hope this actually helped you. I think those were pretty, pretty cool, neat tricks. And uh, yeah, I hope it's pretty helpful for you. Uh, so let's actually get into the outro. Guys, I hope you actually enjoyed that video and I hope that actually did help you out a lot. Uh, thank you so much again for the support on the last videos and thank you so much for sticking around till the end. And I hope you are excited for the next uh, series which again is going to create a character. And also please check out the free procedural fence tool that I created for you guys to be able to use. It's totally free, the link is down in the description. And um, please, if you actually take it and use it, tell me what else would you like me to improve on it and uh, what else would you like to see me uh, creating. And uh, with that being said, uh, again, thank you so much for sticking around till the end and I hope you guys have a great day and uh, a great end of the week. And I hope you're excited for the weekend. Bye guys!